Well, welcome. This is Mr. T again. This is part two of aerodynamic forces, where we're going to look at drag. Uh, we just got done looking at lift, so now let's take a look at drag. The drag equation, uh, again, I won't derive it for you, but it looks a lot like our lift equation. So let's look at all the different components. So remember, drag um, is opposite the direction of flight. So typically, we're going to have our thrust going to the left with our direction of flight, and then drag opposes that. So drag, again, is the force. If you stick your hand out the window, drag is the force that pushes your hand backwards. So if we look at the equation for that, we see some familiar things. If you've watched the lift equation video first, you know that uh, the quantity here, 1 half rho v squared, is dynamic pressure. A is the area, and rho is a density. V is velocity. And then so CD, or C sub D, is the drag coefficient or coefficient of drag. And just like the lift coefficient, it's something that we figure out from a wind tunnel. So again, it has to do with just like, let's go back and look at the, uh, look at the equation. Um, it has to do with the velocity. It has to do with the, the density. Um, and then it also has to do with some geometry, the shape of the wing, the angle of attack, and so on. So just like the coefficient of lift is found experimentally, so is the coefficient of drag. But let's look at some different shapes. So it's not shown here graphically, uh, but I want you to take note of here uh, on the bottom. It says all objects have the same frontal area. So let's start with a flat plate. So here we have our flow going from left to right. Uh, and our flat plate uh, is some sort of area here. It has a depth, say it's one inch, and it has this height. Uh, let's just call it three inches. I don't know what it is. Um, it's the same as this height. It's the same as this height. It's the same as this height, the thickness of the airfoil, although it's not shown that way. And it's the same uh, frontal area or same diameter as the sphere. But one thing to notice here, these all have different coefficients of drag or CD. So a flat plate has, is going to have the highest. So again, think of sticking your hand out the window in a moving car flat against the wind, that's when you're going to experience the most force. Similarly, if we, so if we take that flat plate and we add some material to the back, we get this prism or cone, and that actually has less, uh, less drag. So it has a smaller CD, and the reason is when you uh, have flow going over something flat like this, it actually detaches and it becomes turbulent and swirls. That gives you something called base drag. That's not something that I'm going to test you on, but that's just something that you're going to want to know. Uh, if you've ever seen a semi going down the, the road or the interstate, you see maybe the, the back of the trailer here, and you see some um, some curved attachments. That's meant to reduce drag, which improves gas mileage. And that's essentially what we have here in the prism. Now, if we look at a bullet, it kind of goes the other way. Um, the, the flat part is back here. Um, and you can see it is even less than the prism because what presents itself to the flow is a curved surface. So almost just like the wing presents a curved surface to the flow, so does a bullet, but it has a lot more drag because, again, it has this flat part at the back. So if you were to take a bullet and you were to make it round or make it a sphere, that's going to go down even more from 0.295 to some range between 0.07 and 0.5. Um, you can actually calculate with some uh, pretty hairy equations, which we aren't going to do here, the lift on a sphere that's that's spinning with just some equations. Uh, and then finally, if we take that sphere and we stretch it out uh, and put a point at the end to keep the flow nice and attached and laminar, uh, we get an airfoil here. Um, and this is not representative of all airfoils. This is just an example. Um, the CD is pretty small number. Um, you remember from lift, uh, in our example, we had 1.19. You want your drag coefficient to be low. Let's take a look at an application. 
So here we have that same Cessna 172, and we had we were given a lot of the things, the temperatures and the weights and so on. The question is, how much drag is produced when the wing is configured such that the coefficient of drag is 0 0.05. Well, what we were given in the previous video, and if you don't recall, go back and look at the aerodynamic lift video. We were given temperature, velocity, mass, pressure, the wing area, and now we're given the CD. And what we need to figure out is the drag. So again, we want to show our, our knowns our unknowns, and then our relationships. So to calculate drag, what do we do? Well, we look at the drag equation, and we pull, simply just plug in our values. So we know our CD is 0 0.05. We know our area is, and we're using this equation, this, this part of the equation here, our area is 18.2 square meters, our density, our velocity, and so on. And we divide that by 2, we get 436 newtons. So if you remember, the weight was in like 10,000 newtons. So drag is a lot different than weight, or at least it should be um, in uh, normal flight conditions. So let's take a look at some things that cause drag um, and maybe some ways to combat them. So a couple of things that we want to take a look at are called downwash and wingtip vortices. So a wingtip vortex, uh, when you have more than one vortex, it's called a vortices. Um, what happens, and we've kind of looked at this a little bit before. Um, here you have an aircraft that's flying um, down and to the left. The air from the high pressure area, I'm sorry, the low pressure area, under the wing, uh, high pressure, flows to the low pressure, uh, because that's how that's what air wants to do, it wants to equalize, so it can't do that right here where the wing is thick, it does it right at the wing tips, and it does it on both wings, so when air flows up and over, that creates sort of a little mini tornado, and what happens with that is it destroys lift right at those wing tips. Uh, we don't want to do that. So um, here's a picture of, uh, and I don't know if this is a an actual picture or just a representation, but you can see this airplane flying at you, and you can see the swirls in the background. That's exactly what happens. That's created from uh, wingtip vortices. So a way to combat that are to add, and we have talked about these before, winglets. So winglets are these little bent up tips, if you will. These are called winglets. And that helps prevent the air from coming from underneath and over. It sort of blocks it. It doesn't get rid of it entirely, but adding a winglet, it decreases drag uh, from wingtip vortices.